Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna make one of my most favorite sandwiches of all time, the katsu sandwich. As always, we're gonna make it completely from scratch. If you like this video, check out my other ones. And if you really like it, hit subscribe up there and enjoy all my upcoming videos. So, let's get started. First, we're gonna make the tang zong mixture. Again, it's a Japanese technique that helps the bread to be a little bit more fluffy and will not get as stale as quickly. We're gonna mix together four tablespoons or 60 milliliters of water and two tablespoons of 15 grams of flour mix that together and then heat it up on low to medium high heat until you have like a mixture that looks a little bit like this put it aside let it cool down to room temperature now we're gonna activate our yeast for that we're gonna use two third of a cup so 145 grams of lukewarm water a pinch of sugar and our yeast which is one and a half teaspoons of four grams of yeast mix it together and let it sit for a little while until you can see yeast foaming up on top that means your yeast is still alive and you can use it then we're going to add two and one third of cups so 275 grams of bread flour strain it we're going to add a quarter tablespoons of five grams of salt one third of a tablespoon of eight grams of honey two and two third of tablespoons of 40 grams of heavy cream and our yeast and tang zong mixture we're gonna add all that together we're gonna need it for around 10 minutes with our stand mixer if you have one if you don't have one you can do that by hand you don't necessarily need it it just makes it a little bit easier we need it for 10 minutes as i said after that we're going to add two tablespoons of 25 grams of softened unsalted butter after we added that we will let need for another 15 minutes i know it sounds like a lot but it will help immensely with the gluten development and you will see the difference in the result at the end so take the time let the dough knead for 20 to 25 minutes all together and again, if you like this video and you want to learn more about cooking in general or German cuisine, check out some of my other videos on my channel. So, now our dough seems to be ready and you can see it's really nice stretchy, gluten is developed. And we're gonna place it into a bowl, lightly greased and gonna cover it with a damp towel or some plastic wrap. And then just put it aside for an hour, an hour and a half until it doubles in size. Then we're gonna make sure that we flour our work surface before we place our dough on top of it. Otherwise, it will stick badly, trust me. So, then we're gonna roll it out. Um, also, heavily flour your rolling pin and roll it out until it's around a quarter of an inch thick and has the width of your Pullman loaf form. You can double check that. Just place it on there as you see right here and see if it has the width. And then we're gonna roll it together into one thick fat torpedo. And the dough might stick a little bit, so use one of these little dough dividers and just help it to roll. After you're done with that, flip it around and make sure that you really seal it well on the top that's what we're doing right here then after the whole dough is sealed we're going to grease our pullman loaf form and place the dough inside with the sealed side facing downwards really important and then place it in there put some plastic wrap on top and let it rest for another probably hour just keep an eye on it sometimes it's faster until the dough reaches the top but you should still be able to close the lid you can see right here and then we're gonna place it in the oven by 350 degrees fahrenheit or 176 degrees celsius for 30 to 35 minutes or until we have 200 degrees fahrenheit inside the bread and that's it our perfect sandwich carrier now we're gonna make our katsu sauce which is a shockingly simple and easy sauce um, we're gonna use half a cup or 140 grams of ketchup, two tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of mirin, one and a half teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, one teaspoon of freshly grated ginger, one clove of garlic, just press it or cut it into small chunks, and then we're gonna add one tablespoon of honey. We're gonna mix all that together, and I recommend let it sit aside for at least 30 minutes or an hour so the flavor can deepen. And you will be shocked how delicious and well the sauce works with the katsu. And now we're going to prepare the only other topping besides the pork, our cabbage. I like to use mandolin on the finest setting. Or just use a knife and cut them as thin as possible. Put them aside until we are able to assemble our sandwich. Now we're going to the most exciting part, our pork. For that we just use some boneless pork chops and cut them probably around 
half an inch thick and use our meat tenderizer and punch the whatever out of it. Be careful that you really hit it flat, not an angle so you would have holes in there. Just hit it until the whole thing is probably around a quarter of an inch thick. If you don't like pork, you can also use um, chicken breast or chicken thighs. Also, don't forget to season the pork with salt and pepper. Now we're gonna prepare our breading station. For that, we're gonna use two eggs, just scramble them together, some panko powder and some flour. We're gonna put our pork inside the flour. Don't make such a mess as I did. And use one hand for the dry ingredients, the other one for the wet and press everything down. Make sure the whole pork is covered in flour. Then we're gonna place it into our egg mixture. Make sure again, everything is covered. And then we're gonna put it into our panko breadcrumbs, which you can get at pretty much every supermarket and place them in there. Make sure again, everything is covered. Press it down nicely, put it aside repeat that step with all the pork chops you want to make. I think I made three or four in this video. So put them aside and then we get ready to fry the pork. For that I used a cast iron pan with vegetable oil. Just heat it up until it reaches probably around 360 degrees Fahrenheit. Place the pork in there and make sure you do it the other way around than I did. Let it down the way away from you facing away from you so if you let it down nothing will splash on you and you will not hurt yourself then you're gonna fry it for probably like three to five minutes until it's golden brown and then we place it onto a paper towel so the excess fat can just drip off and now we're gonna cut our bread it looks amazing it tastes amazing trust me so just cut two slices and the nice thing is about this bread it's like there's not really a crust. You can really bend it and it's super delicious. Now we're gonna place our cabbage on it. Add a little bit of QP mayo, which you can get at the Asian supermarket. It tastes a little bit different. If you don't have one, just use your regular mayo, whatever you have and put it on there. We're gonna add our katsu, add our katsu sauce, and then we're gonna add the topping of our bread. And we have to enjoy the cross section when we cut that. As I said, it's probably one of my favorite sandwiches. It's super simple and it's just super, super delicious. If you like this video, make sure to check out my other videos, as I said before, and let me know what you wanna see next. Are there any other recipes you wanna see? Any other recreations or anything you wanna see? Put it in the comments, that like it there and let me know. Thanks for watching, see you guys next week.